Welcome to LA, welcome to California, and we're here with Arch to test their new KR GT1, which is all new for 2020. There's 20 major design changes and 150 component changes for the bike for 2020. Some of those changes have been done for Euro 4. For example, the rear mudguard, or fender as they like to call it over here, is slightly higher to give more space. And the different upgrades is with suspension, the steering. Um, we've been out all day today testing. So we've done just over 100 miles, which was a mixture of freeway, town work, city work, and then up in the mountains. And when you come to ride a bike like this, you kind of have uh, expectations and you kind of go, okay, it's gonna be a big cruiser, uh, we're gonna be in America, it's gonna be a bit soft, the ground clearance is gonna be a bit rubbish and the brakes aren't gonna be as strong as they say they are. But I was absolutely blown. It's completely not what I was expecting. As soon as we left here, you could feel that the suspension was really, really taut. The suspension is very sporty, um, it's very agile. The power is incredible, it's over a two litre capacity and the brakes are really strong. As soon as we got on the freeway, cruising at 75, 80 miles an hour, 3,000 RPM, very little vibration, sounds great, looks cool, turning heads, everybody in the cars checking you out. And then we got up into the mountains, I was like, okay, it's probably not gonna handle as well as expected, but the initial turn in is a little slow, it's very planted and stable, it's not twitchy, and then once you get it on its side, you just keep leaning, and then you lean a little bit more, and then you lean a little bit more. You know, we're not dragging pegs, we're not dragging exhaust, it just keeps leaning over and leaning over. But what's really impressive is the transition from left to right. So a roll, you get this like, beautiful like roll from left to right, then into another corner from right to left, and it just, it's just a toy with. You're not kind of raising it over the suspension and then it doesn't sit on the shock and then vice versa and vice versa. It's just nice and planted, nice and rolling. If you really rev the big engine, yeah, it's got loads of power, but after around 4,000 RPM, you really don't need to. Just stay between two and a half and three and a half thousand RPM. Massive torque, massive power. Noise-wise, sounds really good, but it's not overly loud. It's not scaring animals and pe making people be frightened. There's a nice pop on the overrun, but if you want to just cruise around town, it's nice and nimble, nice and quiet. But then when you do give it a big handful, it just reminds you that this is over a two litre in capacity. The machine work on it and the billet work on it is just, it's just beautiful. You could take parts of this bike off and put it on your mantelpiece at home. Get rid of the TV, just put one of these in front. So yesterday we got to ride the new Arch motorcycle. Today we've come down to the factory to see how the bikes are built, to see how they're put together, to see the CNC machining, and to see the design process. So let's go inside and have a good look. What makes these bikes so unique is everything is built and done here in-house with meticulous detail. A huge amount of aluminium uh, CNC machining. So this is the fuel tank. So you've got the right-hand side and the left-hand side fuel tank. These are both connected, so if you feel the right, the right feels the left and the left feels the right. But just to produce this tank, this is obviously very rough, it's 15 hours per side on the machining. So that's 30 hours just to produce the fuel tanks. Then they've got to be welded with the back plate. And as you can tell, this welding is all done by hand because each weld is slightly different. So this is not a machine that's done this, this is a guy here in the workshop. Then once this has been welded and put together, it then has to be finished, it then has to be painted. So you're looking at around 50 to 60 hours just to produce the fuel tanks. And this is repeated throughout the bike. You just pick any section of the bike, and again, it's CNC machined, it's been done by hand, and it's not machined and then put on a shelf and left covered in dust. They're producing around seven to 12 items each time. So here in the factory, there is only five or six of these fuel tanks ready to go. And then when the order comes through, they will make more fuel tanks. 
It's just a beautiful work of art. I mean, you could have that fuel tank on your, in your front living room as a display. It's just a beautiful bit of work. But then you can see where the hours and the painstaking time has gone in. Because obviously this was designed before it was made. The machining was done. The tooling was done. The CAD design was done. So it's 50 hours to produce a fuel tank. But before that, there's months and months of design and prep work. So believe it or not, this is a swinging arm. Well, the right-hand side section of a swinging arm. So we take the huge big block, this goes in the CNC machine, and after many, many, many hours, we kind of get this level, which as you can see is starting to develop as the side of the swinging arm. And then carefully, finally, we go from there to here, and then this section here is what has come out of this giant block. Now, produce each bike here in the workshop, we look at around 1,200 pounds of aluminium. So each section of this swinging arm where it's welded started off as a huge block like that. Then it's in the CNC machine, which can be anywhere from one or two hours for some parts to up to 15 hours for other items. And then it's beautifully hand welded together. The beautiful finish. And then we end up with the final swinging arm, which this is the new swinging arm, which with improved rigidity, over the previous model. And it's the attention to detail again, like the beautiful finish here with the slight ribs, which is all deliberate. This is, this is absolutely stunning. And again, from 1,200 pounds of aluminium that they use, they end up using around 200 pounds worth of um, actual aluminium that goes in the bike. So there's 1,000 pounds worth, as in weights, of aluminium that's recycled and comes back into the system. And I just wanted to pick out one or two little bits that I find intriguing. So for example, the levers. These are not just any old levers. You want one lever? That's $1,000. The calipers, huge six-pot radials, $1,500 per side. The reservoirs have changed, so now you've got ABS. Um, it's a Brembo uh, one on the back. The dash, completely changed. Again, that's for Euro 4. This is much larger. The fuel tank has changed in shape. This isn't as, as aggressive as it was on the previous bike. So all these little changes and all these little bits of trinket. This is the highest end of custom bike building at its very best. So this is the final production model. It takes around 90 days to produce this bike from absolutely nothing to the finished bike. And if the parts are not already made, you're looking at around four months to make the parts, add everything together and to produce the bike. The bikes are made here in LA. If you want to purchase one of the bikes, you can choose different seats. Everything can be bespoke to the way you want to ride and your setup and your weight and where you ride. Uh, you can come down to the factory. You can discuss with the guys, discuss what paint scheme you want, what kind of finish you want. It's all down to yourself as the end customer. But what a machine to have in front. And yeah, 90 days to go from. If all the parts are in stock, if everything is on the shelf, one guy, 90 days of work. These bikes are going to be available in the UK shortly. We're looking forward to see how this bike will perform in the UK on bumpier roads, but really blown away. I was expecting kind of like a, a soft, not so exciting bike, and it's not. This is a true sports performance cruiser.